Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Wednesday, September 21st, and uh, the big news now is Formula One is coming November 18th, 2023 to the strip in Las Vegas. Yes, they finally named the date. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we've known, we've written, we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. you know, on the, on the show. And, uh, but nobody knew when it was going to be. They kept switching the dates and everyone was guessing, but they said November 18th is going to be the race. Uh, what's interesting about it, it's going to start at 10 p.m. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be like a, a nighttime thing. And you know, like, why would they do that? 10 p.m., it's going to be 1, 1 a.m. on the East Coast. But in Europe, it's going to be like 7 in the morning. Oh, okay. All right. And in Asia, it's going to be like, whatever, one o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is. So, I mean, I think they're doing this for, first of all, they want the to be more of a spectacle, a nighttime thing in Vegas, but also, so it's, you know, got worldwide appeal. Mm -hmm. And I think they're looking at, at uh, you know, t time frames for everybody around the world. Well, that makes sense. And I got to tell you, this is a real international event because I don't even really like cars that much. I mean, but this is exciting, especially uh, going so fast down the Las Vegas Strip as your backdrop. It just there couldn't be anything sexier. Well, they're saying up to 200 miles an hour, or, you know, slightly above 200 miles an hour. Yeah, that they're going to be going and that's going to be down the strip. And then, you know, a loop, a 3.8 mile loop, um, 50 laps. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be wild, but we uh, we still got a year to go. Yeah, well, we got a year to look forward to it, and it, like you said, international spectacle. Yeah, it's going to be it'll be fun. Start planning. And sticking with sports, congratulations to the Las Vegas Aces for winning the uh, WNBA finals. Yeah, the uh, women's basketball team uh, <laughs> took it all. They won the championship. It's a big deal in Vegas because it's the first professional sports title mm -hmm. that Vegas has. Obviously, we've got the hockey team, we've got the Raiders football, uh, but we've got lots of other teams, and this is the first championship. And um, they beat, uh, they did it in four games. It was a best of three. They beat the Connecticut Sun in uh, game number four, 78-71. And I'll tell you, Andrew, this is a really big deal in Vegas. I mean, it's the women's basketball team, but it's professional sports, and it's, a, you know, the city's first championship. Yeah, that's super cool. And, you know, I see it, I see it advert, like, you know, congratulations on the side of Allegiant Stadium. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, very they're, cool. They're really good. I mean, you know, they were, they were favored to win it uh, all the way through. Uh, they've got a really, really good team, good coach, and uh, yeah, congratulations to them. It's, it's cool to see it finally happen here. All right. And now moving on to sports betting competition. Anthony, what's going on with the Circa Survivor? The uh, evil Circa Survivor. Oh, no. It's, uh, it's all over in two weeks. It only took two weeks for me to be done. Oh, geez. All yeah. six entries. All, all six entries. Five of my entries went on the first week, and the last one I had, if anybody watched, they'll know my pain here. I had the uh, Cleveland Browns. Oof. And with, uh, you know, the, all you got to do in Survivor is win. They were six-and-a-half-point favorites, so you don't have to cover the spread. All mm -hmm. you got to do is win. With a minute and a half to go, the Browns were up by 13. And the reason they were only up by 13 is because they missed an extra point, or they'd been up by 14. Mm -hmm. All right? The odds that, that were projected at that point with a minute and a half, 99.5% chance to win. Oh, geez. So guess what happened? If you, didn't, if, you didn't, if you watched it, you know what happened. Yeah, tell me what happened. All right, if you didn't watch it, they're playing the Jets, the lowly Jets. Okay. Jets get the ball. They score a touchdown. Uh -huh. They make the extra point. Uh -huh. Now they're down by six. Okay. They kick an onside kick. They recover it. They throw a bomb. They score a touchdown. They make the extra point. They win by one. The onside kick, you know, that, that thing really doesn't go over very well a lot of the time. It's like it's some ridiculous number, less than less than six or seven percent. Yeah. I mean, so this was yeah, this was a bad beat. But anyway, I'm done. I'm not the only one. Seven hundred more were eliminated. Oh geez. So this is a really bad two weeks. Yo, unbelievable. I mean, you know, I'll I'll get to that in a minute, but there were the, you know, the Browns, a lot of people bet on the Browns. I mean, chose the Browns. Uh, the Bengals lost. The Raiders lost. All of this, you know, takes it down another 700. There are only 2,012 remaining. Wow. All right. Okay. That's, so 67% of the field has already been eliminated. Mm -hmm. Now, to put this in perspective, this is the third year of Survivor. The first year, after two weeks, 42% were out, and that seemed like a lot. Mm -hmm. Last year, only 27% were out. And then this year, 67% are gone. Wow. So it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, the way, it's the way it goes, you know. And I mean, you know, I'm out of it, but there's still 2,000 people left. And we'll keep watching it and see what's going. Interesting thing here is, though, because of all of these favorites are getting beat. That's why, because everyone's picking favorites in this contest. The books are winning like crazy. 
because the public tends to bet on favorites. Okay. So when the dogs win, the books do well, and the books are, are happy as hell. They're, they're winning right and left. So this is the, the sports books. This is the draft kings of the world. This yeah. is, uh, okay. They're doing real well. All right. Okay. I'm buy so, buy so, the stock. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for them. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so that's rough. So you're watching the game. You think you got it all the way up until the last few minutes, uh, and, you, and you lost it. Well, you know, like I, like I say, one, you know, 99.5%. <laughs> now, you, you also mentioned a few people didn't even put in bets this time. Yeah, another uh, 21 didn't put in their entries. So that's wild. So we're almost at about $50,000 of incinerated, yeah. uh, you know, ticket purchases. Yeah, once you don't put in a pick, that's that counts as a loss. Oh, jeez. So those people are out. All right, so there's always next year. We'll keep you posted on Circus Survivor, but unfortunately, Anthony and his friends are out of the uh, of the tournament. True. Uh, but we'll keep you posted. All right, so here's something that's really cool. Every year, Anthony goes to all the Monday night football uh, parties at all the strip clubs in Vegas. Uh, so how are the strip club parties looking, Anthony? Well, I didn't. I don't just go to the strip clubs. Okay. You know, I go to uh, I go to all the casino parties. I go to mm. not all. You know, nobody could go to all of them on a Monday night. You mm. know, or on several Monday nights. But the strip clubs for years had some of the best Monday night parties. Mm. So on the second Monday night football game, I go to as many strip clubs as I can. I think I either drove by or went into a dozen of them. Oh wow! Okay, so that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. You might not have hit all of them, but you hit most. Just about all of them. The okay. only ones I didn't hit were the ones in North Las Vegas. Um, it's again, just like it was last week. We talked about the casinos. It's just nothing like it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, the strip clubs used to have buffets and, and, you know, great drink prices and the whole thing. Several of them weren't even open. Oh, geez. And, you know, this was a double header week. You know, they could have had a really big crowd coming in like they used to. They just don't do it anymore. The one great one, the one exception was, uh, is Sapphire again. Yeah. Sapphire is, you know, they really do it well. Last year we did a remote from there. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked to the boss over there and he said, come on back. So maybe we will. All right. But they, you know, they're doing it again. It's 25 bucks, but you get two drinks and you know, it's, it's, they have the buffet. Much, yeah, it's good stuff and a great buffet. Yeah. I mean, they had, you know, chicken and rice. They had meatloaf and, and mashed potatoes and gravy. They had uh, salad. They had hot dogs. They had, you know, desserts. Um, it was, it's a fantastic buffet. It's crowded. They got the big swings going. They got the girls are doing the serving Mm -hmm. and, uh, they're not topless, you know, they're in their swimsuits and all of that. So those of you who don't want to deal with that, you don't have to. Okay. It's a really good, fun party. I mean, it's as good a party as you're going to find anywhere. So really there's two good ones, Mm -hmm. South Point in the casinos and Sapphire in the topless clubs. All right. You heard it here. Uh, we talked about South Point last week. We actually talked about Sapphire too, but now you got to go experience it. Uh, we did it last year, so maybe we can get back in this year, take some more video. Yeah, they want uh, us to come back. So, okay. you know, we'll try it. One other one, Hustler. Hustler for 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. They were You could pay 20 bucks for the right to buy dollar hot dogs and dollar beers or something like that. But it was really not on the same level as, uh, as the uh, Sapphire Party. All right, and here's something cool that I did. Uh, so we've been talking about the Ghost Bar. Uh, Anthony, I've been talking about it, but Anthony's not been yet. I finally made it to the Ghost Bar, and uh, what a stunning view. Yeah, you know, it always has been. I yeah. mean, it's same as before, right? I mean, they didn't put up curtains or anything like that. No, it's incredible. They don't have the glass floor anymore. Though. So you can't look down. You cannot look down. The, the ghost bar was famous because they had a little, like, probably yard, you know, like, meter square it was of cut glass. In the, it was cut in the floor. It, yeah. was, it was a hole cut in the floor with a plexiglass thing over it. Yeah. So you could look down. The problem was that all the girls with their heels would step on it and all, and they got all scratched up and right, all cloudy, up. and it wasn't so easy to see, mm-hmm. but they took it out completely. I, I, I heard, and you just... you, you Confirmed. It. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. It's no longer there. Uh, we got there early. We got there right as the sun set, because I wanted to watch the sun go down. I wanted to watch the sun set at, uh, at the Palms. We got there just as the sun set. Really beautiful. I mean, you got 360, almost 360 degree views of uh, Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and uh, you can go to all different sides. Um, no cover? No cover. No cover to get in. Um, There's a sort of a, something of a dress code, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, I think, no graphic T-shirts, stuff like that. It wasn't too heavily enforced. Uh, but again, I got there really early, and when, since I got there early, there weren't a tremendous amount of people. I think it heats up probably around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. So if you want to see the sunrise, you can get there and get a probably get a seat and you know whatever, get a yeah. table, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. There are a few few tables open. There are a few couches open. Uh, the bartenders are great. Um, drinks were delicious, good. and um, good. Not enough good things I could say about the Palms Ghost Bar. 
And on a sad note, Kat Holbert and Alan Dinkinson uh, have passed. Yeah, we felt uh, that we wanted to talk about this because these are two people that are really well known in the gambling world. Mm-hmm. Um, both of them I knew. Um, I, I knew Kat pretty well. And Dink, they called him Dink, right? Nobody called him Alan. Um, Kat was um, one of the first female blackjack team players. Okay. She played all over the world. She was a terrific blackjack player, professional level. She also was a poker pro. And what kind of tells you how good Cat was, the book Gambling Wizards by mm-hmm. Richard Munchkin profiles just like eight or nine different uh, gamblers, and Cat's one of them. How oh, cool. So anybody who wants to read about Cat and all the things that she did, you can, you can read it in Gambling Wizard. And Dink was uh, sort of distinguished in his own right by a book that was written about him. Dink was a sports better, mm-hmm. uh, known for his hockey betting, and, but uh, lots of others, you know, other sports too. And there was a book called Lay the Favorite mm-hmm. that was turned into a movie called Lay the Favorite. And Dink was played by uh, none other than Bruce Willis. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a big star. So, I mean, this was a big budget movie. I think yeah. something like $20 million budget. And it didn't do well at the box office like a lot of gambling movies don't. But if you want to know who, who Dink was, go check out Lay the Favorite. And um, he didn't quite look like Bruce Willis, but, uh, but Bruce Willis did a good job. And for this week's Jackpot of the Week, we got Tom M., who wrote in, I was at Virgin Hotel playing $1 triple play double-double bonus. After building 200 up to 600, which never happens for me, um, <laughs> which is very rare, I told myself uh, one last hand, and I was dealt four aces with a nine of clubs. I was hopeful for one kicker, and I got three. Turns out Las Vegas is way more fun with an extra $6,000 in your pocket. All right. Kicker, kicker, kicker. Yeah. Anthony, three kickers. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, he was playing 9-5 double-double bonus, Uh so that's a 97.87% game, which might be about the best game you can find at Virgin, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. I keep saying Virgin's got to up their game a little bit, but um, he was able to hit. This uh, particular hand reminds me of something even crazier that I that I saw oh, yeah? on a triple play game, uh-huh. and it had to do with uh, with a guy uh, filling a, a royal flush. And I, I think maybe we will uh, we'll show that. Okay, so maybe. this is a little tease for next yeah, week. We'll show for, that. One. I think we'll use that one for next week, even okay. though this this happened quite a while ago. But it looks a lot like this. All right. But uh, hey, nice play there, right? Eh? Yeah, I mean that's so cool. It's like you're hoping to get one kicker, you know, right. and to get all three. That's just, I mean. That's incredible. And it's a big difference between $800 payout and a $2,000 payout. Yeah. Well, you think he went and uh, celebrated somewhere in one of those good restaurants? Or, you know? I'm wondering. I'm wondering. He was at Virgin. You got Nobu there. Did he go blow 500 on Nobu? Why not? Why yeah, not? why not? There you go. And one more thing. Back to, uh, to last week's 100K jackpot. Uh-huh. Everyone keeps writing in the uh, comments box. Tell Bob Dancer congratulations. Yeah. Certainly that was Bob Dancer, <laughs> right? Playing at, uh, at Dottie's. Yeah. Uh, no? It was not Bob Dancer. Mm-hmm. So it, uh, you know, again, we, we're not saying who it was because uh, the guy who hit it uh, requested the anonymity, but uh, no, it was not Bob Dancer. All right, but somebody out there, they got that 100,000 uh, video poker hit, and that must feel nice. It did, I'm sure. As always, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week. <laughs>